Hello YouTube, today we are talking about the brand new LG G4, the latest flagship from the Korean mobile phone giant. This was released in the USA last week and it's going to be released very very shortly in the other markets like uh, India as well. In fact, as shortly as tomorrow it's going to be released in India. So in the US, it's priced, the unlocked phone is priced between uh, $600 to $700 depending on which variants you're buying. There are four variants, we're gonna talk about all these, but let's start with the unboxing first. So once you open the box, as usual, you will find the phone on the top, and then once you go further in, you'll find the manuals, batteries, um, you know, USB cable, charger, and the earphones. Uh, mind you, ours is not exactly a retail unit, this is a not for sale unit, a review unit, if you will. So we do not have the earphones and the manual right now, but with the retail unit, you will get all these uh, items that I've just mentioned. Now that I told you, the LG G4 comes in four variants, mainly uh, divided by or mainly segregated by uh, the back. Now you have two ceramic version, one gray color that we have right now, and then one white color, and you also have to pure leather version yes pure leather not fox leather like uh, someone like the note 3 or even the note 4 this is pure leather and in that you have two colors the black one and then my favorite the brownish color that looks absolutely gorgeous despite of being a device with a 5.5 inch screen the lg g4 does not look that big well it's not uh, the slimmest device in the market at about 155 158 grams although not the thinnest but it's one of those rare breed of devices, flagships really, which uh, still um, can remove the back flap and the battery, which is, well, a very good news for many people. Samsung stopped doing that with the S6, but this one, the G4, at least still are doing this. But, and you also have the 5.5 inch screen. It's an IPS quantum display. Now, IPS quantum technology is a new technology that LG uh, is providing you which actually LG promises will increase the brightness by 25% the contrast uh, by about 50% and then even the color by about 56% so overall you should see a brighter crisper display we're gonna see that in the display section apart from that well uh, the ceramic bag uh, almost looks like plastic but it has a very nice you know honeycomb like uh, texture which feels great and fits nicely into your hand you also have metal in the side ring and the screen although is very very glossy uh, but then it takes the design cue a bit from the LG flex 2 so you'll find that the back has a boat shaped uh, you know curvature and when you hold it in front of your eyes it almost feels like as if the G4 is also a curved body but it's not actually curved the screen is straight but because of the curvature of uh, the back you actually feel like it is a curved phone and whenever you're using it whenever you're let's say scrolling a page down you'd actually feel that curve that's one great thing specifically when you're uh, watching any media like movies or YouTube videos those kind of stuff you have the usual array of buttons on the LG on the any flagship that you get uh, and it also stays true to the design element the design uniqueness that the LG G2 brings so you uh, still have the power button and the volume rocker on the back just below the 16 MP OIS camera and then you also have the laser autofocus uh, which LG promises gives you a much better autofocus lock and also faster apart from that a new thing is that uh, you know on the side of on the other side of the camera you find the LED flash but a lot of people mistake it for a dual tone LED flash but no you have a single tone LED flash and below that is what they call a color spectrum sensor now that actually senses the actual color of uh, the subject or of the frame and will give you the proper color as much as possible which is another great thing overall i like the design element and the build quality of the lg g4 
but despite of all this uh, you know marketing languages from LG it still actually feels a little plastic at least the ceramic versions and does not feel as premium as someone like the HTC M9 or even the Samsung Galaxy S6 but it definitely feels more premium than the iPhone 6. The 5.5 IPS quantum display has a very good body to display ratio and it also has a brilliant viewing angle. Uh, it's IPS but it's quantum technology so it's very enhanced IPS screen and almost kind of just about there with the Super AMOLED screen. To top it, you have a 2560 by 1440 pixels of resolution, a 2K resolution, which brings the color density to 538 ppi, one of the highest color density that you would see in the modern day flagship phones. And this also is a proper color density to view the magazines in digital format in their true colors. The G4 being a flagship obviously runs on Android. Um, lollipop 5.1 well it looks very very stable and it does not lag at all but lg has lots and lots of smart apps in it and i would have liked a little less smart apps and it also has lots of other in-house apps and then your usual google android apps does not have many third-party bloatware but the smart apps the collection of smart app um, i feel is a bit uh, too long and also at times unnecessary Overall, the user interface feels very, very similar from the LG G3. You still have the great security features like the knock code. You still have a double tap to, um, you know, uh, wake up the device. And you also have um, various themes and other things. You have LG Watch, which has a collection of themes and wallpapers and all those stuff. And overall, the user interface feels very snappy. Now, talking about the camera, the LG G3's camera was very impressive with this brilliant laser autofocus system and the G4 is also no different. You have a 16 MP camera which has a brilliant 1 by 2.6 um, inch sensor and has a very fast f by 1.8 aperture. It also has the laser autofocus system and that uh, color spectrum sensor to be able to lock focus quickly and also to be able to produce accurate colors it also has optical image stabilization so lots and lots of features out there but how did the image and video qualities turn out well images are very very detailed under enough light they are even when you zoom in 100 percent the detail does not get lost but we see it um, under saturating the green color just a bit um, otherwise even the white balance is great and all the other colors are properly saturated and properly reproduced uh, the front camera is brilliant it's an 8 MP camera and you can see here it does not over process your face to um, you know try to make you uh, look brighter or more white and in this process uh, does not um, you know erase all the detail you still have that skin tone and you still have that proper um, you know skin texture that's one of the good thing with the front camera a lot of front cameras do not do that overall we love the brilliant camera but my favorite feature is definitely the manual mode where you can um, uh, you know you can toggle the white balance the iso the shutter speed of course not the aperture because it does not um, you know phone cameras do not have that feature but one setting i would have liked in the manual mode is to be able to customize one particular feature let's say a shutter speed and uh, the other features automate or the other parameters automatically adjusted to that to give you a proper exposure uh, you know much like the aperture priority or the shutter priority mode on the camera here you have a fully auto mode or a fully manual mode you do not have in between you don't have a semi automatic mode yeah, so overall a brilliant camera and before I forget, yes, the LG G4 support shooting raw images. Many of the cameras uh, like uh, the iPhone 6 or even the Samsung Galaxy S6 do not shoot raw.
So you heard the sound, what do you think? I think the sound is loud enough, the speaker, but it's devoid of bass. The surround and 3D sound in the movies, however, are brilliant. The LG G4 is a very, very powerful system. You have the Snapdragon 808 chipset, which actually has a quad-core CPU and then a dual-core CPU. Now, why did LG opted for an 808 and not the 810? I think it has to do with the heating issues of the 810. The Snapdragon 810 was reported to be heating up um, you know, really easily. So LG uh, might have skipped that in favor of the 808. You also have the Adreno 418 GPU, 3 GB of RAM, and that result in brilliant benchmark scores, almost stopping or in the top three or top five of almost all the benchmark tests that we did. We also threw in some of the very demanding games like the Modern Combat 5 and Asphalt 8 and you know, FIFA 15 and such. And the device could play them absolutely without lag, without breaking a sweat. They went any uh, skipped frames or lag, uh, you know, whatsoever, anywhere in all those games. So ultimately, the great thing about today's world is that you have lots and lots of options. You have very little performance issues, look issues, I mean, you know, material quality issues among all the flagship top devices these days. So it can be anyone's call on a good day. And, uh, you know, if you go for the G4, I won't blame you because this guy is brilliant and it's almost near the top. I would give it anywhere in the top three of today's best phones. If you like this video, please hit the like button, ask anything related to the G4 and we'll try to answer them all. And please subscribe to this channel and share this video to share the love. And we'll also try to give links to buy the G4 here. If you go and buy from those sites, they'll be very popular sites. If you go and buy from those sites, we get a small commission often in single number digit percentages, but that will help us get going. Thank you.